have a little fun. Please, put your hands out in front of you. Make a fist. Close your eyes. And remember your first roller coaster ride. <laughs> Can you still feel the excitement? Can you feel the fear? OK, you can open your eyes now. I will never forget my first roller coaster ride because it taught me one of the greatest lessons of my life. If you were in or around Chicago during the 1960s, you would remember a very famous amusement park called Riverview. And if you've never heard of it, to give you an idea of what it's like, Picture your favorite amusement park ever on Valium. Because <laughs> you see, Riverview didn't have all the crazy roller coasters of today. It didn't have all the twists and the turns and the hanging upside down. But it didn't have any of the safety features either. <laughs> There were no harnesses, no belts, no buckles. And at the time, they had a roller coaster that was touted as being the fastest, fiercest roller coaster anywhere. Mm -hmm. Every year, someone would take that roller coaster to the top of the first hill, and they'd stand up. Because remember, I said there's no safety features. <laughs> They'd stand up and they'd wave to their friends and say, hey, look at me. And as that roller coaster plummeted down that first hill, they would get sucked out, thrown to the ground, smashed up against the wall, and die. At least that's the way my mother told the story. <laughs> So when my big brother Tom, my really cool big brother Tom, wanted to take me to Riverview for the day, my mom turned to me and she said, Nancy, no roller coasters. Those things will kill you. Hmm. She scared me to death. But Tom grabbed my hand and off we went to spend the day at Riverview. Oh, if you had been standing beside us, you would have seen these huge gates brightly painted in yellow and orange and red. You could hear the screaming and the laughter coming from inside the park. And if you took a minute, you could even smell the cotton candy. It was 74 acres of pure fun and every kid wanted to be there. I was 10 years old. Tom was 20. So after an hour on the kitty rides, he got bored. He said, come on, Nancy, we're going on a roller coaster. No, 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 I screamed. Mama said, no roller coasters. Aren't you the least bit curious? Curious, I said, no, I'm scared. But Tom was stubborn. He never did take no for an answer. So we thought a minute and said, huh. If I get her to say yes, would you go then? I was 10 years old at the time. What did I know? So I said, OK. Off we went to find the nearest phone booth. Remember those? <laughs> he went inside and closed the door, but I could see him through the glass. And he's on the phone, nodding his head, laughing, smiling. He stepped out and said, guess what, Nancy? Mama said, yes, we can go on a roller coaster. I was terrified. But there's no going back now. Before I knew it, we were standing in line, inching our way forward to my first roller coaster ride. Suddenly it was our turn, and, and we slid inside this tiny car with this itty bitty bar across our lap for safety, nothing else. Then there was this jerk, and those chains began to pull that car up the first hill. And you could hear the squeaking, and the clanking, and the clinking. 
And just before we got to the top, Tom nudged me and said, guess what, sis? Mom's at work. I never did talk to her. <laughs> what? I screamed. And as we plummeted down that first hill, the only thing louder than me screaming was him laughing. <laughs> we got slammed to the right. We got smashed to the left. We went up more hills. We went down more hills. I was scared to death. And suddenly, oh, suddenly the ride was over. I took a deep breath. I looked at my brother. I said, let's do it again. <laughs> That's when he gave me a great big hug. And he said, you see, sis, always stay curious. Let's fast forward to the year 2007. And I guess you could say I was on another kind of roller coaster ride. And I'm going to call this one the roller coaster of life. We all have to ride it, whether we're ready or not. Life was good. I was going up that hill. I was in a loving relationship for over 15 years. We had built this phenomenal business together. It was so successful that we could afford to live in this beautiful house. We traveled the world. And above all, I loved being with him. He was my best friend. Things were great. I was going up that hill. It couldn't be better. But I must have stood up when I got to the top. Because when I least expected it, unwelcome change crept up behind me and altered my life forever. And I never saw it coming. One day, my husband walked down the stairs, sat beside me, and very calmly said, I'm leaving, and I'm not taking you with me. What? I was sure I misunderstood him, but I didn't. Just like that, my life as I knew it was over. Just like that, I lost a man I loved. I lost my business. I lost myself. I didn't have the strength to fight. So I packed up my life in 11 boxes. It's all I took with me. Have you ever faced a challenge in your life so great that you feel like you're in this bad dream? And if you could just wake up, your life would go back to normal again. Well, that's how I felt. But when I did wake up, there they were, the 11 boxes. And I knew my normal, my normal had changed forever. I called up my nephew because he had a van and he could help me move. Emotionally, I was kicking and screaming the whole way. I did not want this change. I did not want this new life. I had no idea how to begin piecing my life back together again. Little by little, bit by bit, piece by piece, I began to meet people, watch movies, read books that inspired me and taught me lessons that helped me to recreate myself, that helped me to believe in myself once again. And one of the most powerful lessons I learned from who else but my really cold big brother, Tom. Now, this was about two years into this messy, stressful time of my life. Starting to get things back together again. I found a new job. I moved into a condo, and I thought, hey, I'll back up that roller coaster of life again. 
like all roller coasters, you don't know what's coming around the next turn. By now, Tom had moved to Florida. He was living in Florida with his family. Didn't get to see him as much as I would like, but we talked on the phone as often as we could. So it's a beautiful fall day. Blue sky, leaves are changing reds and yellows and, and, and beautiful shades, all sorts of colors. And my phone rang, and from caller ID, I could tell it's Tom. Hi, Tom. But it wasn't Tom. It was his wife. And in a very quiet voice, she said, Nancy, your brother has two months to live. You better come say your goodbyes. I had just lost so much. And now I'm going to lose my brother? When I could finally catch my breath, I jumped on the first plane down to Florida. When I first saw Tom. It startled me. He, he was weak now, and he was in a wheelchair. His whole life, he always had this beautiful, thick black hair. But it was all gone now. He looked up at me and said, hey, sis, you like my new hairdo? <laughs> and that's when I knew it. His spirit hadn't died. He was as feisty as ever. Later that evening, he started teasing me, saying, hey, sis, remember how scared you were when I took you on your first roller coaster ride? <laughs> After we stopped laughing, I looked at him. I says, Tom. You scared now. He thought a minute and said, no, I'm not scared. I'm curious. Curious, I said. What are you curious about? And he simply said, I'm curious to see what's next. Shortly after that, we said our goodbyes. Once again, he gave me the biggest, warmest hug ever. And he whispered in my ear, remember, sis, always stay curious. I came back to Chicago trying to figure out how to deal with the loss of my brother, with the loss of a sibling. And then I got a call telling me the company I worked for downsized, and I had lost my job. If you have ever been out of work, you know how awful it is. Those bills keep piling up, and you have no idea how you're going to pay them. I was so scared. That's when I remembered my brother's choice of words, curious. And I thought, if curious could keep him positive at the end of his life, I wonder what it could do for me. Not that word, scared. And I replaced it with curious. And I thought, I'm curious if I'll find my next job soon. <laughs> I'm curious if those bills will pay themselves. They didn't. <laughs> but I found that using the word curious actually made me feel better. It was like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I was feeling pretty good. But as you can imagine, not having a job, not paying those bills, led to me getting that notice in the mail. That notice that said I lost my home. And I thought, how much more can you throw at me? I, I, I was angry and, and devastated and disappointed and depressed all at the same time. I was embarrassed. I needed help. So I reached for that word curious again. I took that word devastated and I replaced it with curious. And I thought, curious if I'll move to a new city. 
I'm curious where my next home will be. Park Avenue or Park Bench? But I found that each time I used that word curious, I began to look at the challenges in my life differently. And through the wisdom of my brother, I began to look at the opportunities and not the problems. I'm telling you, being curious changed my life. Yes, I lost a business, but I have now found a career as a professional speaker that I am passionate about. I lost a house, but I have now settled into my new home. And I lost someone I thought was my best friend, but I have now found someone who truly warms my heart. In fact, we just got married a couple of years ago. So you see, when life challenges overwhelm you, take that first step and be curious. It is a choice but it's a choice that can help you gain control over some of the craziness that life throws your way. That's the legacy that my big brother Tom left for me, facing life challenges with curiosity. And now I pass that legacy on to you. You never know what doors it can open for you. And in the words of my big Brother Tom, my really cool big brother Tom, remember, always stay curious. Thank you.